Okay, so this has already finished blending. Let's give you a peek. Okay, and um, so what I've, I've done is I've tossed it in here. Um, quite frankly, it, this is really messy. So I'm using, you know, one of the spaghetti strainers and I'm using this and I'm, I'm actually putting, really should be this way, quite frankly, but it doesn't fit. So I am doing it. This is the last strainer. This is the first, this is the second. And it's keeping me from having to use a cheesecloth like I did last time. So um, let's see how we do. Okay, so I'm going to. going on okay gotta be careful because there's a lot in here so this thing goes by the weight and it lights up when it's not heavy enough so i gotta kind of hold it uh it's a good machine the ninja but i have it a little bit too filled to capacity okay so i think i already did enough <laughs> Maybe it'll make it thinner. It's already done a good job. Okay, so I've done it twice. I didn't even do uh, the other one two times. Maybe that, that was a good idea. So now, here we go. Okay, I'm going now to pour this into the strainers, my little invention, because I'm too lazy to do the, the, the cheesecloth today. And maybe it's good for you to, to see some different ways of doing it, alternative ways. Because you could just go watch TV while this thing continues to strain, right? Why not? Okay. So, you hear it going down? It's going down. When it gets thicker, then, then uh, it may not go down as easy. I hope this doesn't tip. I gotta be careful. So see, it's all empty now. Just want to make sure this doesn't tip. It didn't tip only when it was in the sink. Hopefully it won't tip now. If I do, God in Jesus' name, don't let it tip. Okay. So now for my last batch. Okay. So, move over a little bit. I'm going to pour some more cherry, um, grapes in here. As you can see, I'm just picking them off. It's a little vine, I guess. And um, that's how I do it, right? This is the first step for me. I'm not going to step all over it because people don't do that anymore. I actually have a machine. Next time I do it, I'm going to show you a machine uh, that Italians use for the spaghetti sauce and probably use for their tomato, their grapes, for winemaking as well. But not everybody has that machine. It's a colander and it does it really fast. It shifts the hard stuff with the from the soft stuff and the juice comes out rolling easily, okay? But that's not what I'm going to use right now. I already showed you how to do it through the uh, cheesecloth. Now I'm doing it by doing this um, strainer. I got to be careful not to uh, even tip that strainer head. I really should have it facing the other direction. Ah, uh, oh, great fleece. Ooh. Okay. Don't let the stems go in there. It'll only make the process harder. Okay. There we go. Dropping a few here or there. Okay. So. Where did they go? I'm trying to pick them up on the floor. Oh, I didn't see where they go. I don't know where they went. But 
here's some, let's see, if they're loose. Just pick them off and put them in here, right? And yes, it's a little tedious, so maybe I'll just pause it so I won't bore you to death. All you need to do is see like a minute worth of it. You don't need to see several minutes, but you could always fast forward. So here I have some that are loose, okay? Then I'm going to pour some water so it could blend. So actually, I'm doing it in good timing, and the bag is empty. And I'm going to pour... I'm going to now pour some water on this so you can see the grapes in there so that way they could blend okay and we'll be on the next process but as you can see the straining is not going as fast as it should because i'm supposed to be shaking it so let me just tilt this head a little bit over a little bit higher little mountain there see a little mountain there okay so I just want to stir this so I could come down some more and the more I stir it the easier it goes down I'm just keeping it from from going down because I'm too busy multitasking if you would okay so see the faster I go with this the faster it goes with that Okay. See? That way I don't have to touch the other stuff. I don't want to tip anything. So then it starts to get really thick, right? So like they say, the, the plot really thickens. So when, when it thickens, then you know that that's the part that you're going to have to discard. I'm going to give it to my animals tomorrow. I'm going to put it in a little... Uh, a little bowl for them the you know the deer would eat it the squirrels would eat it groundhogs would eat it and god made us all right why not love one each other since humans can't love each other might as well love the animals i guess that's a bad joke right it's really uh wishful thinking for me oh my goodness the ones that i dropped i dropped some how could that be you won't believe this how on earth did this happen I dropped several, <laughs> several grapes in here. How did that happen? <laughs> All right, so you hear it going down, it's going down. And this is already thickening, thickening, thickening. So then this is going to have to go into a baggie where I'm going to feed it to the animals tomorrow. And they'll probably be very happy. They get, they get them on there sometimes because I do spoil them, so I look for the trouble. You spoil an animal, right? Especially a wild animal. But uh, the deer don't upset me ever. Although sometimes they crap in my lawn. It's good for it's good for the lawn, right? Although I don't have a, I'm not a prepper. I don't have any vegetables. I'm not, I'm not growing anything outside of uh, my own uh, high beds. But they're not. <laughs> it's just like one potato bed. And the groundhogs destroyed it, by the way. So I'm thinking, if I ever have a farm, now I know that the groundhogs will come and destroy it. So how do you, how do you keep them away? I mean, they're not doing it because I I I I, I uh, spoil them or anything. They're just, you know, they they like the potatoes. They like the potato. Um, see, so this is what's left. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, see. So I'm done with that portion. Okay, done with this portion. All right, so it is really just, um, this never should have been in here, quite frankly. It probably just holds the other one, gives it a better grip, but this only has big holes for, for steaming. It is not going to do anything, but it's good for leverage, I guess. So we have one more, okay, but so now I'm just stirring this. And you hear it going down? You hear it? As I sh shake it? I'll keep shaking it, then it gets thicker. As you know, the plot thickens, right? So it thickens, and then I, I put it in my discard area. Okay. 
because we only want the liquid. And then what I'm going to do is I'll probably squeeze, use my cheese cloth at the end to squeeze out all the juice from what I was going to give to the animals, just to get as much as possible. Okay. All right. Well, you hear it going down? All right. And that's what it looks like. And you can see what's down there. It's probably like... You know, it's not very much, but then I'm going to warm up a little bit of water, fill it up with water, and start the process. Okay. So this is not, again, how you have to do it, right? You could do it a few different ways. And this part over here is not going to have an effect on how sweet or how dry it's going to be, quite frankly. Um, how much sugar and water you put in it, pretty much how much sugar and yeast, actually, you put in it is what's going to determine it. My last... Uh, wine came out so delicious that you could be addicted, but it had a lot of sugar and that's why it was really delicious Wine is not usually sweet. My friend loved it <laughs> See I keep my hand on top I don't think I have to do it actually this time. It's not that far Oh, I guess I do have to hold it Okay, so I'm going to make this go down a lot faster by stirring it, stirring it, stirring it. And you can hear it going down. You know, you, I really don't have to stir it much before it's, I notice that it's really all the pulp on the top and it's, it's been ready. So now I'm going to hold, I'm going to freeze this. You don't need to watch me do it a third time. Just hold on to your pants and uh, relax. Okay, so now we're on the third batch. Basically, I'm doing three of these. Okay, just three of these. So we're in the third batch. And uh, it works a lot faster when I stir it myself. And... Uh, so I'm going to use my same technique because I think that uh, the metal actually gives it some leverage maybe I'm wrong okay so I gotta pray nothing spills here because I'm doing this for the camera it's better to do it from this angle than from my sink you could you could feel it, you could hear it going out pretty fast. All right? You could hear at the beginning there's plenty of liquid in there that goes down pretty fast. Okay. I mean I could go watch TV and probably let it sit, you know. Uh I think you gotta stir it. Because it'll clog, right? So I think it'll clog and hold it up for quite a bit of time. I think I'm going to try something different. Uh, I'm not going to put the yeast right in it. Um, I'm going to try to create some yeast out of its own. And then I'll put yeast 
regular yeast in it afterwards. I think combining the yeast for some reason, I know my, it came out really delicious last time. So I get a feeling that combining, you know, part natural yeast, part not natural yeast, you know, I mean the powder may, maybe helps. So I, I think I'm going to do that again because I'm in no rush for this. I really just needed to get the grapes out of the fridge. Okay, so see how thick it is? Okay, that's how thick it's got to get. You know, so all the water is down there. And now it's on the second strainer. Okay. So we're good. Okay. So now I'm going to pass this on. Okay. Okay. Pour it in my other bag. And maybe I'll, I'll squeeze it. I think I have plenty of juice that I don't need to squeeze this anymore. But I'll show you what I'm doing here. What you're not able to see. Well, I have my back to the camera. I'm just unloading all the uh, oh, that was left. Okay. So now we're going to finish this off because this is pretty... You know, this is just spaghetti. I mean, I, this is a good idea just for kind of leverage, I guess. I got a little chicken. Maybe the more the merrier for me. I don't know. But, um, okay, so now I'm going to stir this pot. And now you're going to hear it going down. You see that? And you can, this is very loose. It's very loose for a while. Then it's going to become, it's going to thicken, right? And, uh, I guess, I don't know which way you went with the cheesecloth or doing this. Maybe the cheesecloth would have gotten it out of the way much faster, quite frankly. It's thick again. You see that? See how thick it is? So we're good now. I mean, actually, if I stir it, it comes out a lot faster. I mean, is it really a major difference between this? Okay. Is it really a major difference between this, this and using the cheesecloth? And you know what? If I would have used that other machine, it's going to be the same mess. A mess is a mess is a mess, you know? Frankly, this is not a lot of work. Uh, why take out the big, big spaghetti tomato sauce machine? Unless I'm going to make a whole lot more wine than this. Then, then that's worth it. That's more for commercial. Okay. So here I am just trying to tidy up a little bit. Give me a second. I'll be right with you. I guess I don't have to do this now. But it's just messy. I hate... I hate seeing a mess. All right, so now, get this out of the way, get all this out of the way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it ferment by itself, so I'm gonna show you a little trick. I'll be right back, let me pause this for a second. All right, so I've seen how people just leave this open, kind of like just slightly open like that, let it ferment like that. I kind of think that's a little gross because, um, I mean, we do have yeast all over the air, but I'm not too sure I want my stuff exposed to the air to that degree. So, I'm going to see if I could, yeah, it's pretty easy, easier than what I thought. Okay. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm not putting sugar or anything, right? I'm going to lock this up. This thing is not gonna breathe, okay? As you can see, I'm locking it up, I'm sealing it. I should use a Just make sure it's down. I think it's all down from all corners. Then, I mean, I don't like locking it and unlocking it because it's a hassle. But I think this is the best way. 
it's going to start fermenting all by itself. This thing is going to blow up into a balloon. And then you're going to see what I'm going to do. I'm going to poke it. And then it's going to stay like a flying balloon, but it's going to be halfway because some of the bad air is coming out. But none of the bad air is coming in. I've seen people do it again, like I said. Uh, this kind of open, let the air in, let it ruin it. No, I don't. I just don't think I like that kind of fermentation. Um, when I do uh, <clears throat> kombucha, I do put a cloth paper, I mean a cloth, uh, a cloth over it or a towel um, so it could breathe. It could breathe through cloth through cotton right but um <clears throat> at least it's sealed right I, I don't think i like polluted air to go in right um so this is the best way this is going to fill up because the gases are going to be coming out they're going to be escaping through here this little hole and then um i should have looked just to make sure that that's not too tight let me see oh now i gotta do it again so So you see, air could get in through there. That's big enough. You see that? Can you see that? There's enough air. There's a big enough hole that air could get in through there. Okay, so it's a perfect size. Perfect size. Just like that commercial says, just my size. So now I'm going to put this away, set it, and forget it, right? See, it's already, you can see some air, but that's because I opened it, right? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set it and forget it, put it away. Now it's not... Um, uh, taking up a lot of room in the fridge, so I'm happy. We're all happy. <laughs> it's happy. I'm happy. Okay, so I'm going to actually put it by my fireplace because um, I'm going to be able to watch it there because I'm that's where my computer is, and I'll be able to see that the balloon is filled, and I'll figure I'll poke it on two sides, and I'm going to let it sit for kind of another three or four days. It's never going to go back. So you don't have to worry, okay? And then after that, I, I want to do serious business fermentation. So I'm going to show you what step that would be when we get to that. Now, you have seen that process through my other film, right? And I could start that process right now. I could put sugar in it. I could put yeast in it and start that process. But I kind of want it to get its own natural yeast. And here we go. Thank you so much for watching.